subclass of the Brood War maps are actually pretty good. You know, I played a lot on these Brood War maps, and I tried playing Sarbo with, on these maps, and they're like, oh, surprisingly, they're similar. To a point where, you know, I don't have I don't have to think of it as a new map. Nope. It is, it is the same map. They are sized up from the Brood War counterparts to adjust for rush distances because of like things like the unit pathfinding and Brood War. The armies got places slower than they would if it was this was like a one-to-one -one port. So that's why uh, that's different. If the maps are a tiny bit bigger. Like this is, this is like 128 by 128 is a Brood War map. This would be like 144 by 144. I'm not too sure if the Roadrunner actually had neutral buildings. Um, not too sure if it was the beta version or the actual version that had those pesky neutral buildings or if it was a different map in the same season. But let's introduce our players spotting in the bottom position. Purple Protoss this time. He is down 1 and 2. He needs to win this game and the next one if he wants to make it into the finals. His name is Crank. Axiom Crank fighting! You just did that wrong because you have to count down. <laughs> Aha! No, wait, no, wait. StarCraft 2, you don't count down, but in Brood War, you count down. Okay, there's a difference. So if it's Brood War plus so StarCraft 2, what left, do you do? At the, the top, top left, we have in the blue our Terran player, Acer Innovation. Acer Young, ha! There's that! Acer Young, white tag! There's a Brood War style. <laughs> Uh, he's going straight into the guess. One base play again from Innovation. Been working for him so far. Really favors this fast marine tank play that's just so upfront powerful. Uh, to contrast Crank's really tricky play, where he's going this this very tech-oriented oh. path stuff. Oh, Crank. Oh, Crank. Really? What What do you do? You're going to cheese two times. You're going to cheese like that in the previous three games, and you're going to go for <laughs> Nexus first now? <laughs> oh, you sneaky little piece of bleep that I'm not going to say, but because I work? actually love this play. Innovation's one base. Oh, uh, so you can't count them out uh, getting a read on that with that SCV and then thinking, okay, hey, let me bust you up right now as oh. soon as possible. Oh, Innovation, however, is he going to... Okay, he is going down to south base. Okay, so that's going to tip him, saying, I'm just going to have to rush my opponent as soon as possible, get the bunkers down. Mm -hmm. Hello, just like Brood War. Wasn't the worst uh, of results. He could have scouted last, and then he would have been utterly screwed. He could have been utterly screwed, but it also depends on how much units that the Protoss player can squeeze out as soon as possible. Because if the SCVs get in position, if they put down some supply depots or the bunkers, then there's no way that the Dragoons can actually touch the siege tanks, and the Marines can be inside the bunker for who who knows how long, mm -hmm. really. The other option right now is Innovation pulls all of his SCVs and just goes for um, BS. You know, it's I mean, wait, no, supply comes before barracks. But, um, you know, it's just like something like BBS play where you just pull all the SCBs, get the Marines out, just get the bunker down, and just try to finish the game as soon as possible. The last option, which um, that Innovation might be opting for right now, only because he has the SCV over there. There we go. He's going to oh, just mines. try to follow up with the command center while keeping his opponent inside the main base with the spider mines. And that is going to be his choice of play. Spider mines. All oh, these goons are going to be out and about too soon. Um, so I don't think there's a chance of him actually uh, keeping him in base with spider mines. I think that that juncture is past. Yeah, it's not going to happen. He's going to say, you know what? I'm just going to see if I can get this position over here so that my opponent cannot push up. Well, just trying okay. to see if where the units are and just hoping that Crank steps into one of the spider mines by accident. But oh, even that vulture is so Ooh. close to the ramp and. Crank, he does not have any vision. Oh. <laughs> 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 Go oh, get him, Spider Mine! No! No, no, you I gotta can reject. Do it. No, 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 wait. I could do it, I could do it, I could do it, I could do it. It's outside <laughs> of my range. But I could go for the Dragoose now, but it's outside whoa, of my Whoa, 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 the Spider Mines. Oh. He's going for face with the Dragoons. Oh, he gets two Dragoons with Spider Mine hits. Two oh, really man. low HP goons now. That Where was those? a really nice man. hit. Well, he was distracted, I guess. And you know, people are talk. People were <laughs> always talking about how imbalanced the widow mines are. But did you know 
that vultures are pretty much free because you spend 75 minerals into the vulture and think of it this way for 75 minerals you get three mines how imbalanced is that yeah it's crazy and spider mines in this game are a bit dull they don't have as wide aoe we're in brood war they had oh, mass oh, whoa, oh, whoa. <laughs> Oh man, this is like Brood War AI all over again. I love this game. <laughs> I love this game. It's an stamp of approval, Spider Mines. <laughs> I thought this was going to happen what? because I thought this was StarCraft 2 engine, but. Uh, oh man, I, I was thinking. And they're more predictable than, than Brood War still. Oh, it's a mine still. <laughs> but he does, he does push those mines out, so now he's free to expand and take his third. Um, you know, let's look back at the Terran player. <laughs> oh, on a personal God. note, if you make a highlight of that, I think a lot of Brood War players will start playing Starbo because they're like, oh, the AI is still stupid in this game. I don't think that's a good argument. <laughs> nobody likes half it, nobody likes like getting their goons stuck on stuff. It's just something <laughs> you deal with. You play it because you like the gameplay. Well, this time around, there's a Sentinel inside Ooh. the main base. Though. No ward is going to hit against the SCVs, but it's not going to deal too much damage as the Marines are driving away. Crank trying to micro as much as possible, and he can actually take him out. Oh. No, the two Marines finishes the Sentinel at their very last second. It's a little bit micro, a little bit better micro. He could have done that. Like, no problem. Uh, he can scoot and shoot with the, the Sentinel against Marines. And you can pick them up all. And Innovation saying, I'm not gonna die to any cheesy play, any cheesy follow-up behind this as he scans inside the main base, sees the Twilight Council, he knows that they are, he, now he knows the timing of the Arbitros as the Sentinel, second Sentinel is gonna arrive inside the main base, they're gonna take out Where's the Marines the this going? time around uh, as no word. You can target for the lines. The SV, yeah. uh, those mines, you can actually reroute them, so you could like target these uh, hurt SCVs as opposed to these Marine, uh, these SCVs, and actually have taken out some SCVs. But he did not do that. He's being really annoying with these Sentinels. Again, keeping him pinned back. Uh, but last time, I feel like he overinvested in the tech and in how many Sentinels. He had like three Sentinels, lost one. Yeah. And it just didn't pay off. Where a few Sentinels putting mines across the map and poking and being really annoying with them, keeping some dudes back in base, forcing turrets, that's really good. Um, yeah, I mean. I in the first oh. game when he used the Sentinels, I thought that was a great use, except he just didn't scout inside the main base with the Sentinels, which is also yeah. a great use. I have to say, no worse going down, just cutting off the reinforcements by innovation. This main unit is away from there. He's going to get one siege tank. Remember, if you get hit by the no ward, you get damaged, and you do get slowed so. down. Oh, there's there's only Goliaths. There's one Goliath. Eh, so now to uh, at least poke away the Sentinels. Uh, oh, the one big mistake from Clank, Crank last time was that he went straight into like every single tech path imaginable, where this time he's got a lot more gates. He's got an army, which he just didn't last time. Or it's a really, <laughs> it was a really small army. It was like Templar. It was all tech units, right? Yeah, and... Arbiter, yeah, and Templar, like, Archon. Yeah. Now he's got zealots and goons and just big counts of them. At the same time, there's a wall that will actually... S oh, this is really annoying if these tanks, tanks siege up. Because there's there's really good Sim City against the Firthos here. He, he just oh. back off. Yeah, if he just sees stuff away from the pylon, then there's no way that Crank can actually fit his units through. Mm -hmm. But um, seems like he doesn't want to press on for the attack. The problem for Innovation, however, is that he's still sitting on two bases of Firthos, mining up to three bases right now, and he's com investing heavily into this push. Which means that if this push does not work out, then he's going to be really far behind, possibly losing the game only because he doesn't have enough economy to make additional units. However, Crank is really rammed up in mind this drag. position. Innovation. Oh, mind drag on all these zones. Nope. Really nice. As there's no, there's only few zones remaining in the bag. Innovation doing a nice job, hiding as much as possible. But oh. he actually does not have siege mode. Oh, serious? Oh, it's about to finish. 20, 30 seconds. Please, he just needs to wait 30 additional seconds, and he's gonna be completely fine as Crank. He's trying to make as many units as possible. Crank from is going for it. Gateways, and he's gonna to try to go for it. Oh, Knowing that his opponent does not have a siege tank. Goons are bottlenecked. This, yeah, this is not a good position. If the Zealots come from the back with the Dragoons fighting from the front, that will be perfect, but this is a small position that Crank does not want innovation to be in. This is the reason why Roadrunner is also tricky. Yes, there is a ramp where the Vulture and the siege tank can attack. But defending the third is so pesky, especially if the Terran gets into position. 
Oh, this is such a tricky spot from Crank. Because usually whenever a mech is pushing, you actually stop him at his doorstep, and you kind of like force him to siege up, move back, force him to siege up, move back. But his army was just so massive that he was able to just kind of A-move and shove anything that were, was to intercept him and try to slow him down. Oh. Um, so he was able to just get right up into the third of his opponent, and you see this spot, it's just too much for him. Crank GG's out. Alright, so the problem with that uh, fight right there was one, Crank Cells were stuck behind the Dragoons when Crank was trying to make something happen.